All right, awesome. So I'm recording right now. So my name is Drew Wallace, and I am from NWA 3D. And do you guys have a current 3D printer before you got these? Yes. Yeah? Okay, awesome. What kind of printer was it? Um, well, we have actually a couple of A5s um, that were purchased through you guys. But I'm a brand new user. So. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, sweet. So um, we're going to go ahead and walk through the process of how it all works and then kind of talk about basic troubleshooting stuff. And I, I, how do you guys like the ones that you currently have? Um, as far as I know, we're good with them. I haven't dealt with them that much. Neither of us have. Okay, awesome. So I love to start from the beginning, so that's where we'll start right now. So it's basically four big steps of 3D printing and like how the whole process comes together. The first step is gonna be the hardest and it's what's gonna take the longest to do. And we're here to support you with some lesson plans help and stuff like that, but a lot of it is gonna be trial and error and figuring it out. And that one is the design step, where students are actually gonna create three-dimensional models in a CAD program or CAD uh, program. And uh, that, that CAD program, that computer-aided design program, is where you're going to create the model that the 3D printer is going to make. And we recommend starting with Tinkercad.com. That's an awesome place to start. And we have lesson plans on our website about it. We're about to release another one that's like how to integrate it into a classroom lesson plan um, that we should have coming out really soon. And it's a great place to begin. So have you guys seen that before or experienced it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah? Okay. So... <laughs> And I'll send you links to it, too, so you guys can see those, uh, those lesson plans and stuff um, when we get done with this. When I send you the link to this video, then I'll send you those as well. Um, and what grade do you all teach? Um, I have 10 through 12, so I have some physics students and biology students. Awesome. And yeah, what do you teach? I'm the teacher. I'm the technology coordinator. Oh, okay. Awesome. So um, with the, the Tinkercad, it's kind of like a beginning thing. And when students start using it, they might be like, oh, this looks like it's for kids. Well, it is, but it's also a really powerful program and a place to start. Um, and then once you kind of get the hang of Tinkercad, and we always suggest starting with Tinkercad because there are so many complicated CAD programs out there that um, when you open one up, you might just be overwhelmed with information. And starting with Tinkercad, you can students can kind of figure out, okay, so here's how I move a camera around a three-dimensional object, and here's how you know I'm gonna change my view, and how you're gonna need to put things together to get them to be able to be connected, and stuff like that. So it's a really great introduction, introductionary tool. Um, the second one is onshape.com. And that's probably the next step up from Tinkercad. And it's also free. And just like Tinkercad, it works in web browsers. So it'll work on any um, Chromebook or Mac or Windows. And Onshape also has an iPad app that you can use on an iPad too. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to CAD design on an iPad, but if you have iPads, you can totally use it. And it works more like a traditional CAD program where you're going to actually create two-dimensional sketches and then extrude them and pull them out. So it helps a lot to have kind of some basic knowledge of Tinkercad before diving into that. And then you can kind of see how it's going to be able to pull out and how it's going to move around. Um, and that helps a lot. So having those like those uh, sketches are basically going to be like you would draw on a piece of paper and then you would pull the piece of paper out to make it larger. And when you draw, when you pull it out, that's when you actually make it in 3D. And that's how most other CAD programs work too. And, and once kind of you get the hang of, um, of Tinkercad and Onshape, you can move into Fusion 360, which is an awesome, excellent uh, CAD design program that is free for educators. Uh, and it has to be downloaded on a Windows or a Mac though. Um, but it's really advanced and you can do tons of things. It's something that's being used by um, scientists and engineers around the world today. Uh, it's fantastic. And it's really, really awesome. Um, and once you kind of get the hang of that, or if you want to try something else, SketchUp is also a really great place to go. And that one is also free. Um, and that one is more traditionally like a CAD design program where you would create houses and it's more architecture based. Um, but you can still create things and then 3D print them from SketchUp. So Tinkercad, Onshape, Fusion 360, and SketchUp are the four, uh, our four favorites that we've found uh, schools have had the most success with because they're creating stuff. And that really is going to be the biggest step, because um, when the students are creating things and coming up with ideas and brainstorming and all that, um, that's where they're going to learn so much creativity. Excuse me, so much of the design iterative process is going to be a part of that. So we want to be there to help you to come up with ideas for that, too. So I'm a certified teacher, and we have another certified teacher on staff, too, to help you come up with lesson plan ideas to help integrate it into, like, your physics and biology lessons and stuff like that. So let us know uh, if you want some help, because we'd love to help out with that. So the second step is actually getting your 3D file that you created 
to the printer. And before you can just move your file straight to the printer, you have to put it in a program called Cura, C-U-R-A. And Cura is, is found on uh, the SD cards that came with your printer. And that program is basically going to code your model for the printer. It has to turn it into what's called G-code. And that step is called slicing, because it's literally going to slice the model layer by layer by layer by layer into your three-dimensional form. So that second step, that slicing step, is really important, because the printer won't just be able to read a 3D model. It has to go into Cura first, and then you have to export that G-code file out of Cura. And we're going to go ahead and install Cura here in a second, and I'll walk you through all those settings and what it looks like. And then once you have it installed in Cura, and you've exported it out of Cura, you're going to save it onto a micro SD card which are these little guys right here, if I grab one, like this. Let me switch my camera for you. Like this. So you're going to save it onto this, and then this is the third step, where you're actually going to transfer it from the computer itself to the printer. And you transfer that by putting it into the front right here. So this is going to go the gold side down, just like this, into this little slot right here in the front. And it's going to mm -hmm. click in and then click out of that slot right there. So it's going to go into that slot, and then when it clicks into that slot, then it, it's going to be able to read all of the information off of it. So that's going to kind of be like the hard drive of the printer. And there are printers that you can plug in with the USB cord, and we actually give you guys a USB cord if you want to use it, but we don't really recommend that because if the computer goes to sleep, then the, your print is going to fail. And it also has to always be tethered to a computer if you have it plugged in. Um, and you can't just have your printers in anywhere you want. You can't have them in another classroom, but you're doing your design in your classroom or something along those lines. So we like to use the SD card. And once you have it transferred to the printer, then the fourth step and the final step is you're just going to use the control screen here to hit print. And that's it. So once the filament's loaded and it's leveled and everything else, all you have to do is plug the printer in and hit print when you have your SD card in, and then it will automatically heat up, zero itself out, and then start printing. Um, but first, we need to make sure that we have everything set up, and that's what kind of the rest of this training is going to be. So the rest of this is going to be the four big things that come up and arise with your 3D printer. So the first one is making sure that all of your Cura settings are set up correctly. So if you could go ahead and grab your SD card and then use one of your SD card readers, either the, uh, the, the regular SD card drive or the USB drive, and go ahead and plug that into your computer and look for Cura, C-U-R-A, and then go ahead and install that. And then when you get to the window that says uh, add new machine wizard, after it says installation complete, uh, that's where we're going to stop, and then that's where we're going to pick up. So you guys have any questions about the kind of the process and how it, how it works? I know it's a bunch of information. No, I've never actually had my hands on one, so it'll probably take me working through it first. Awesome. Let's see. Well, that's what we're going to do right now. So. You guys find it? Yes. Okay, awesome. And then while you're installing Cura, if you want to go ahead and put together your spool holder, too, that's what this is. And you can use an Allen wrench that's found in your tool bag to complete it and put it together. What's up? We've got it, and it's all put together. Oh, that's great. Okay. Put together. Awesome. I'll put mine together then. Yep, perfect. Okay, so we run through this Cura install with all the default settings. Well, where, where did you say to stop? Okay, so go ahead and, and stop when it says add new machine wizard. Okay. So it'll say like Cura installation is complete and you'll click finish and then it'll say add new machine. After it installs the Arduino drivers and whatnot.
Okay. We're there. You guys got it? Okay, awesome. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with you guys so we can all be on the same page. So it should be like this, add new machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the parameters of our machine and how it's gonna work. So you have to do this the first time that you install it and every time you log into a new profile. So if you have students log into different accounts, they'll have to set this up the first time they log into their account, just like you would bookmarks in a web browser. But once it's set up, it'll remember all the settings. So we're gonna go ahead and click next and then we're gonna click other as our machine type, because we build it here in Fable. And then we'll hit next. And then Mendel, M-E-N-D-E-L, that's the operating system. And then next again. And then finish. So you should see this. You guys see this screen? Um, yes. Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna set up these settings on the side and then make sure that this area is the same as our build surface. So the layer height is the first thing that we're gonna talk about. So the layer height is how tall each one of the layers go together. So layer by layer by layer by layer, it's gonna create the 3D model. So that's what the layer height is gonna be all about. 0 0.2 is a medium quality layer height. And we usually print most of our stuff at 0 0.2 and that is uh, two tenths of a micron. Uh, or two tenths of a millimeter, excuse me, or 200 microns. And that's about the width of a folded sheet of paper. Um, you can go all the way down to uh, 0 0.1, which is about the width of a hair, if you want to do really high quality prints. Or if you want it to print out quickly, you can go 0 0.3, and it'll print a lot faster, but it won't look as nice because the layers are going to be farther apart before each one of them stacks together. So you can go ahead and leave that at whichever one you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine at 0 0.2. And then the shell thickness is going to be 0 0.8. And that shell thickness is how thick the outside part of your model is. And that needs to be a multiple of our nozzle size. And that's what we're going to change next, which is 0 0.4. So if you wanted to add a stronger shell to make a stronger model, then you would change this, obviously, to 1.2. And then keep adding 0 0.4 to it. And that's why our nozzle size right here we set to 0 0.4. Right there on the bottom. Okay. And, it, and it also, when you scroll over stuff, you, as you notice, it'll tell you exactly what everything does. So next is the bottom and top thickness right here. So that's going to be 0 0.8. And that's going to be the same as our shell thickness. And then the fill density is how much is filled inside of our model itself. So if, as our model is filled in, it's actually going to have a crosshatch pattern that's filled in on our fill density. And that's what we'll see on how much is either hollow or solid or a little bit in between. And we like to do in between because if it's completely hollow, that can cause some problems because there's nothing inside of it. And if it's solid, that can use a whole lot of uh, filament material. So we like to have it about five to 20% filled in inside. And I'll show you more of that in a second. And then our print speed, we don't want that to go over 50. Um, and we want 50 to be about the maximum that this type of printer can print on any type of 3D printer that uses filament like this does. Um, because it has to lay down one layer and that has to cool enough for the next layer to lay down. If it's going too fast, it can actually peel up the layer underneath it and cause all kinds of problems. So you don't want to go any faster than 50. And the printing temperature, we're going to put at 220. And that's what all of this is going to melt at. This is filament, what we're going to melt. And it's going to melt at 220 degrees uh, Celsius, which is close to 500 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And that is the melting point that this biodegradable filament needs to get to. And it's called PLA. And then our bed temperature is going to be zero because it does not have a heated bed. And then our support type, we're going to go ahead and turn that to everywhere. So if it ever needs supports, it's going to generate them automatically. And then our diameter, we're going to go ahead and say 1.75, which is also written on the side of all of the filament on how large it is. And those are all of our settings to the side. And now we're going to set up this area right here in the middle. So we're going to click machine, and then we're going to click machine settings. And then we're going to see this screen right here. So let me know when you guys see it. We see it. Okay, great. So we're going to change these to 125 or about 5 inches. 
by 150, or about 6 inches, by 100, or about 4 inches. And that's the maximum size that your printer can print, or as big as this box right here. So this whole box is going to print in the entire size. When so pretty much the entire again? printer is taken up by that. Can you give us those numbers again? Sure. Yeah, 125 by 150 by 100. And now we're going to uncheck the heated bed right here. That's the last thing we're going to do. So all these settings are found in a screenshot on the SD card. They're also in the user manual that's on the SD card. We have a video that particularly sets up every one of these settings that you can follow along with, and we're going to send you this one. And we're also available to call, too. So we know that it's so much information. Uh, we want to give you all the tools that you need to be able to install it. So that's why we're here. So don't hesitate to contact us, or contact our support, or send me an email or anything if you guys are having trouble with it, because we know it's a bunch of stuff to fill in. Okay, good. So now we'll go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to load a model in. So now that we have Cura set up, we're ready for that second step. So we've already created a model. And as long as our model is in a .stl or .obj format, which those four programs that I talked about, that's what they export as, you'll click Load, and then you'll click on your 3D model. So in the case of this one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to um, my Downloads folder. I've got some stuff for a Saturn V rocket. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and download my rocket. So I've got my Saturn V rocket, I've got my files in here, and then uh, we'll go ahead and start with one of these, like my gantry model here, and then anything as long as it's an STL file. So here we go. How about this pin? Right there, perfect. So it's a .stl, and we'll go ahead and click open. And then now it's loaded into Cura. So this, if we move it around, we can put as many models as we want in here. So if I wanted to load another one, because I've got the space, I could put this hinge in here. I could even maybe uh, hold down shift, and select two of them and put several bottles in there. As long as they turn yellow, they can 3D print. If they turn gray, that means they're outside of the build area and they're not going to be able to print and they're not going to be sliced. Because that's what this is. When you move things around, you kind of see this moving up here. That's what the slice is. So this is going to take 35 minutes to do and it's going to take uh, 2.44 meters. And this is really close to how, how much time it takes. That's usually within about 10 minutes of the actual time. You can also make sure that you orient your models because these, you can see, they're not really oriented the best way because they're not really touching the build plate very much. And if you click on view mode and then go look at the layers, you can actually see here's all the turquoise like support structure that's going to need to be generated. And you don't really need to have that generated too much. So one thing about 3D printing is to make sure that your models are turned in, in a correct way. So you're going to have to have uh, your students be able to pay attention to how it's actually going to print, too. So to think about stuff while they're making their models, well, how is it actually going to print? So you can rotate models by clicking on them and then clicking Rotate. And then you can flip these around. So I can rotate this all the way around, so now the flat side is down, which is much more 3D printable. So I can just rotate all three of these so they're all flat. And then especially this guy, too, by just clicking on these rings and moving them around. And I can hold the right mouse button to kind of move my view around. And then I can flip this up like that. And then now when I click, it's now it's only going to take 31 minutes, so a little bit less. And when I click on layers, you can see it's only going to make the support structure for the inside right here. And you can actually move this up and down and see exactly what each layer is going to do. And here is the infill that I mentioned earlier. So when you change this value, it's going to change how much is filled in inside of your model. So we'll go ahead and click view mode and go back to normal. And you can also scale things. So if you're not worried about the exact size of something, you can click scale and scale it. So the uh, digital caliper comes with your 3D printer. So you can actually measure things, and your students can create things down to a tenth of a millimeter, and the printer will be able to print it out. But if you're not worried about that scale, you can go ahead and drag these and make it a lot larger. So you can change these by dragging these cubes right here, or you can click on these values here and make this 0 0.5 to be 50% the size, or 2 to be double the size, because 1 is 100. And then once you have the models the way that you want, and they're arranged on the build plate in the way that you'd like, because where you put them on here is where they're going to print on here. So since I put these kind of all three in the back side, they're going to print kind of all back here in the back. So it's going to take 38 minutes, and I can click this Save Toolpath to SD, and that's that third step. So you can either right-click and save wherever you want, um, and click Save Your G-Code and pick where you save it, or you can just click on that SD card, and it will automatically save it directly to the SD. And then you can name it 
whatever you want. So we'll say a hinge pin. We'll just take that off so it's just hinge pin. And then we'll go ahead and click save. And that is the transfer step. So now you're gonna eject that from your computer and you can click down here. It sometimes has the eject option or you can uh, safely remove the hardware to be able to eject it. And then you'll take that SD card and take it out and then put it in the front of the printer. So if you slice that robot, if you want to, then you can go ahead and stick it in the front and then it just clicks in there. So you can slice the robot if you'd like, or there's already test prints that we've saved on there if you want to use those. So let me know when you've got the SD card in the printer. Um, and also we don't have filament loaded. Oh yeah, that's fine. We're gonna go over all that. Okay. Can I plug the printer in? Uh, after you get the SD card in, yeah. That'll be the next step. Okay. You get it in there and plugged in? Yes. Awesome. So now we're going to go ahead and inspect our printer. So the first big troubleshooting step was making sure our current settings were right. Second one is making sure that the machine integrity is all solid and it's all, it's all ready to go. So to do that, we're going to test everything by kind of moving it around a little. So this is something that we do when they get shipped or if they're going to be moved around a lot in your classroom. And that's just to make sure that these all move freely back and forth. And this one moves and the belts right here are tight. And then this is pointed all the way, this is pointing straight out and it's not broken. Same with this, this idler pulley right here is all fine and they move back and forth and they're not too loose. And then also checking these plugs too. So there are four motors that go together for this. There's the Y motor right here and it moves this back and forth and there's a plug for it right here and a switch for it right there to make sure those are plugged in. There's the Z motor right here, which goes up and down and that plug is right there. And its switch is actually right here, and it's kind of underneath here a little bit. to kind of like check on that one and make sure it's good. And then there's the X, which goes back and forth this way. And that motor switch is right here, and uh, the switch is right there, and then the motor's right here. And then the extruder, what actually feeds the filament out is this motor, and then that plug is right there. So kind of check all those, make sure they're all plugged in, and they all look good, and uh, it doesn't look like there's anything cracked or broken or anything like that. Nope, looks good. Look good? All right, awesome. So now we are to the third step, and this is the most difficult mechanical step of 3D printing, and that's making sure that the bill plate itself is level. So to do that, um, we're going to go ahead and plug it in, if you haven't already. And then we need a piece of printer paper, um, or you can use that piece of paper that came with the printers and just fold it in half, and that's what we're going to use to actually level um, our printer with. And then uh, once you grab a piece of paper, let me grab one too myself. There we go. So once you have a piece of paper and it's folded, then we're going to tap this button here. That's what we're going to control everything on the screen. So let me kind of move the camera down a little bit so you can see it better. And we're going to tap this. And then, what's up? Just a second. Oh, okay. No problem. Okay, we're ready. So go ahead and tap that, and then you're going to go to Setup, and then you're going to go to Auto Home. And that's going to zero the X, Y, and Z motors on your printer. Okay. Now we have this extra um, lock build build plate. Mm hmm. Um, are we going to use that or? Um, well, you guys purchased that, so we figured that you wanted to, uh, that you guys just wanted an extra one. Oh, okay. So, okay. over time, this will wear down, so, um, uh, but it'll probably last a school year, but maybe next school year or something like that, you might want to replace it and you'll have a replacement one. Oh, okay. So, the one already on there. Okay. Yeah, because they come automatically with a lock build. Okay, great. Um, and since you guys already have, like, um, Daniel already has one. I don't know if he has a lock build, so we thought maybe that was for his or something. He doesn't. Okay, so then he could use the lock build on his then. Okay, great. Are you Mike? Yes. 
Okay. Okay. Awesome. And so I spoke to you on the phone. I was kind of like thinking when you said your technology, I was like, okay, <laughs> sweet. Um, so once we have it zeroed out, then uh, we're going to tap the button again and then click setup and then click disable motors. And then that is going to allow us to move these back and forth freely. And this is the part that's tricky. So we're going to have our piece of paper and it's folded. And then I'm going to be picking my printer up and moving it around, but you want to leave yours flat on the table while you do this. Because what you're going to do is you're going to adjust these little bolts on the bottom. So you're going to need to pull this out to the end to where the nozzle is above this little, this little bolt and kind of line them up pretty close to where they should be. Want the nozzle right above the bolt? Yep, just like mine. Okay. And if it's off a little bit, that's okay. Okay. You got it? Yep. And then now we're going to take our piece of paper and it's folded, and we're going to slide it between our nozzle and our build surface. And if it doesn't go underneath there, you can actually squeeze this right here and then push it under to make sure it goes in. So you can kind of squeeze it and then push it because we're going to have the nozzle between the paper, or the paper is going to be between the nozzle and the build surface. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the tension of the paper. So we want this to drag. So um, the layers have to be close enough to stick to the build plate so they can stick layer by layer by layer by layer. If they're too far away, they're gonna get knocked loose or turn into a giant pile of spaghetti and they're, or they're not gonna stick together. Or if they're too close, they're gonna be like digging trenches or digging into the bill plate itself. So we need to adjust it two tenths of a millimeter or fold a sheet of paper from the bill plate. So we're gonna move this little nut right here until we feel the paper dragging and a lot of tension, almost like vibrating as the paper moves back and forth. So the paper moves, but it moves with a lot of tension. And to do that, we'll adjust this a little bit. So if it's too loose on top, you're actually going to loosen the bottom. And if it's too tight on top, then you're, you're actually going to tighten the bottom. So on this little bolt right here, since mine is really loose, I'm actually going to tighten this by turning it counterclockwise. And that goes loose. And then clockwise gets tighter on top. So if you're looking, at, if you're looking right at it and you turn it, clockwise, it's actually going to pull it away, and then counterclockwise is going to make it looser. So this way is tighter, and this way is looser. So you want to go like a little increment, and then test it, until you feel it dragging quite a bit. So I want to turn mine a little bit more clockwise, so it's a little tighter on top. That's a little too tight, so we'll go a little counterclockwise. There we go. And now I feel it dragging and vibrating above this first wing nut right here. And then once you have that one set, then we're going to do the same thing for this one and then the one on the inside. But we're going to do one at a time. Okay. I think we have that one set. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So then go ahead and push this all the way this way and then do the same thing for this one. So then we'll test it a little bit. So I'm going to turn this one a little bit. There we go. A little bit clockwise, make it a little bit tighter. There we go. Until you feel it dragging about the same amount of tension as you feel on this one. Should these um, these clips that are holding the build plate on, should we move those or is that? You're breaking up a little bit. Can you say that one more time? Um, these clips that hold the build plate on, should we leave those where they are? That's a good question. Yes, you should. Um, because you are going to need those to keep the build plate attached. So if they're in the way, just kind of pull it forward a little bit. And if it's not quite above the top when you adjust it, that's okay. Because okay. those clips are going to hold the build surface down. And this is where it gets real tricky. And, and little increments help a lot. So if you're going to like turn it a little bit and then test it and then turn it a little bit and then test it. And then you'll be able to figure out if you're going the right way or the wrong way as you're, uh, as you're moving it. It's tricky. <laughs> I 
Okay. Okay. Got it. The inside one. How do we get to the inside? Now, that one's tough. So you'll have to move this to here, and then you'll test your paper. But my fingers are too big to fit in here, so you probably have to pull this all the way forward and then adjust it a little bit, and then adjust it to be tighter or looser, and then pull it back and then test it. So that's way too loose. So go a little bit more clockwise, make it tighter, and a little bit more clockwise, make it a little bit more tighter. There we go. Until you feel it dragging about the same amount of tension that you feel on the other ones. And since it's a triangle, when you tighten one a whole lot, it's going to make the other two loose. And when you loosen one a whole lot, it's going to make the other two tight. So just keep that in mind as you're like moving them around. All three of them have to be loosened or tightened to about the same area. Okay, how do you pull the play out? What's up? You just slide it out or you can adjust it and then slide it back in. Exactly, yeah. So you can just grab onto it and just like pull it out and then adjust it a little bit. And then you might want to push down to, make, to help the paper go underneath the nozzle and then test it. You have to do this every time? Nope. That's a really good question too. So you'll only do this when it messes up. So only when it knocks models loose because it's too far away or things are warping up on the sides because it's too far away or it's too close and it's like digging into the filament or no filaments coming out. So this is something you only have to do like maybe once every couple weeks. Maybe. Some schools have did it. One school only did it once all last year. They got their printers in October and didn't do it at all until like just now in the, in the, the fall. <laughs> Okay, I think we're ready. Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna heat the nozzle up. So to do that, we're gonna tap this button right here, and then we're gonna click Setup, and then we're gonna go to where it says Preheat Soft Pull. And that's also the same thing that you're gonna tap to unload filament. So that, what that's gonna do, that's gonna heat up the nozzle to 100 degrees. So that will help the filament get to a semi-solid state. So when you pull it out when it's at the 100 degrees, you'll pull out all the gunk and stuff that'll be inside of it. And this will also help us to knock anything that might be on the bottom of the nozzle off. So once you hit that, go ahead and tap the button again, and then hit setup, and then go ahead and hit auto home again. And you can leave the paper on there, it's fine. And then when it stops moving, we'll disable the motors just like we did last time. And then we're gonna go around and test it in above each one of those again to make sure that there wasn't any filament that was stuck to the bottom of the nozzle. So we can kind of move them to each one of these areas. So we want to test this. Mine now is a little bit loose. So I'm going to need to tighten it a little bit. And we'll go ahead and turn a little bit clockwise and tighten it a little, maybe a little bit more. There we go. We feel it vibrating on there. And move it right here and test this one. Oh, that's a little loose too. So turn it a little bit that way. A little bit more. A little tiny bit more. There we go. So. After a while, your students will get the hang of this. And I totally encourage you to have your students be the ones that are leveling this and troubleshooting it, because they totally can. So now this one's a little bit too tight inside, so I'm going to pull it out and then kind of loosen it a little bit. Turn that counterclockwise. And then when you feel it vibrating well, then you can just go ahead and pull the paper out. How's it going the second time around? No, it's a little tight. So y'all are going to be experts at this before we're done. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Yeah? Okay, awesome. So now go ahead and unplug it. So we do that to reiterate two things. One, it's a fail-safe. If something ever goes wrong, just unplug it. And then you can kind of diagnose what's happening. So if it starts to make noises or if stuff is falling off the bill plate or something like that, you can just unplug it. And we have some power switches that we're about to, um, to have, and we'll let you know when we have those, where you can actually turn it on and off. But right now, we just have it where it unplugs to help keep the cost low. 
Um, and then the second big thing is to make sure that you never leave it on and heated when filament is loaded. Because if it's heated up and there's filament in it, but it's not printing, the filament can actually bake into the end of the extruder. So the only part that gets hot is the nozzle. No other part of this heat shield gets hot, no other part of it, but that nozzle itself is gonna get extremely hot. And that, if it bakes the filament inside of it without it flowing out, will be like burning something in the oven. So it'll turn into like black carbon. So it's always a good idea to have your students, every time they get done loading the filament or unloading the filament, or any time that they're not using the printer, just have them unplug it. So it, it's all, it'll always be like uh, sitting there idle and you won't have to worry about it being plugged in. Now, if you print something overnight or if you print something that's gonna take you know, four or five days to print, which is totally fine, you can print things that last over 100 hours, it'll, it'll totally be able to print that. Because when it gets done, it will just move the nozzle to the side and then automatically cool itself off. So that's okay. It's okay to leave it on after it's done printing, but it's not okay to like load the filament like we're about to do and then leave it plugged in. So that's just a big word to the wise on that. So now, uh, what we're gonna do, we can go ahead and plug it back in. And then we are going to load the filament. So if you have your filament on your spool holder right here, uh, it's gonna feed in to this part right here on the extruder, and that's what we're gonna feed in now. But before we do that, we're gonna move it up so we can actually see the filament going in there. So let me switch my camera for you. So now we're gonna tap on this button. And then we're going to go to controls. Okay, just a second. Okay. No, we don't have it on the holder. Oh, okay. That's fine. And we're like five minutes from being done, just so you guys know. Okay. We got it. We're on the holder now. All right, awesome. So we're going to tap the button. Uh -huh. And then go to where it says controls. And then move axis on the bottom, okay. and then spin to one millimeter, and then spin to move Z, and then just spin this, and it'll go up to like 30 or 40. And that is just gonna raise this up, this whole gantry up into the air so we can kind of see what's going on. So we raise that up so we can see it. Normally, like when it's done printing, you won't have to do this step, but that's just in case you know, like if it's, really, if it's too close, we won't be able to see the filament come out. So that's why we raised it up. So now we're gonna tap our button to load filament. So to do that, we're gonna tap this, and then go to where it says setup, and then preheat PLA, because this material is PLA, or polylactic acid. And then while that's heating up, we can go ahead and load it. So to do that, we'll take our filament, and when it's not in use, you wanna make sure that it's through this hole here in the side. So you wanna always make sure it's pulled through this hole so it doesn't come untangled, just like weed eater line or fishing line. But when you're ready to print, you wanna pull it out of that so it can flow easily off of the spool to be able to flow in there. I'll try to stop a little bit for you. But what we want to do though is we want to clip off any melted stuff or gunk that's on the end. So go ahead and grab the clippers that came in your uh, tool bag and then clip this off at kind of a point to get that gunk off of there. And then this is what's going to feed into your printer right here. So you're going to feed it through this hole. Can you go find just a second? Yeah, sure. Okay, we had to find the clippers. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, now we got it. Sure. So it, it's going to feed through this hole and then through this part right here and then all the way through this white tube until it won't go anymore. So you'll squeeze this lever just a little bit and then push it through here and then keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And the reason that you have it at a point is to help it to feed in there easier. And then you'll keep pushing and pushing and pushing all the way until it won't go anymore. And then if it's heated up, when you keep pushing and push a little bit more, when it feels tension at the end, you actually see the filament coming out of the end of the nozzle. So you can see mine coming out there. Because oh. when it gets heated, that's when you can load and unload the filament. It has to be heated to be able to load and unload. So when we squeeze it and we're pushing it, you can actually see there's a filament coming out the end. Okay. So you can just reach in with your tweezers or pliers or something like that and then grab it out of the way. And that's why we have the pliers and the tweezers that come with the toolkit, so you never have to reach your finger into that nozzle, because past this, this protective grommet and this heat shield, that nozzle is really hot. So this part's not hot, and this part's not hot, but that nozzle itself is. So then now, once we're loaded, let me know. Yep, we're loaded. Got it? Okay, awesome. So now, we'll go ahead and unplug it. Because we loaded it, and we're not sure when we're gonna print, so we're just gonna unplug it. 
That's just like that fail safe. And this also is to show you guys that you don't have to preheat it or level it or do anything when you're ready to print. So you create your model in Tinkercad, you slice your model in Cura, you transfer it to the SD card, and now we're ready to print. So to do that, you plug it in. And then we're gonna tap this button, and then you can spin to where it says refresh SD card, and that reloads the SD card. And then when you go to print from SD and tap that, now we can select our print file. So here is the hinge pin that I saved a little bit ago. And then tap it. And then now it's gonna heat up to 220, and then it's gonna zero itself out because we homed it, and then it's gonna start printing layer by layer by layer by layer. And it's actually gonna print a line around the outside of uh, your model too that can build up pressure inside of your nozzle. It's also gonna show you if it's level or not, and it can knock any gunk that might be off the end of the nozzle on it. So I'm gonna stay on with you guys to make sure that it's printing. So do you guys have any questions? I know it's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, at this point, do we need to um, adjust our build plate or anything once after we hit print? Nope. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, so we just went over adjusting the build plate. So you won't have to level it again unless something's wrong, unless it's too far away and it doesn't stick, or if it's too close and, like, nothing comes out at all. Um, that's when we'll have to kind of adjust with trying to level the build plate and get the build plate right. So you don't have to level the build plate or even load the filament um, every single time you print. You can unplug it and leave the filament loaded. That's totally fine. Okay. Mine's almost there. And you can see the temperature readout, too, on how hot it is and how hot it's going. Okay. It's also going to have a progress bar that will fill all the way across. And when it fills all the way up, it's done. And then you'll see the time above it that will tick down, or that will tick up on how long it's been printing. So let me know when it starts. Is it going? Um, yes, I mean, it's moving around. I think it's getting ready to. So when it starts moving into the shape of your robot, you should see the plastic sticking to the build plate. And those first two layers are the most important. So when you see those first two layers are sticking, then you're good to go and you can leave the printer. And it, the robot will just print. You don't have to watch it. So does it look like those first layers are sticking? It does. Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. Good job leveling it then. <laughs> Well, if it looks like those are sticking down, that's all I got for y'all. So, do you have any more questions for me? Um, not necessarily at this point. We will be referencing the manual quite a bit, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And we're here too. Like, if you guys want to do another training, these training sessions are unlimited. So, however many trainings you guys need, we're there to contact. And, and we want to help you to make it easier because we know it's complicated. So, we want to be there to help out. So, just let us know. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks all right. a lot, dude. You have to see us. I'll, I'll send that recording to you here in a little bit. Okay, great. Thanks. See y'all. Bye. Have a good weekend. You too.